celebration of Buddha Purnima celebrated to mark the Jayanti of Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha inspired humanity to follow the path of truth, righteousness and honesty. His teachings have shown the path of liberating people through spiritual awakening. His message of peace, truth and compassion enlightened the world and is relevant for all the times. In these testing times of COVID-19 pandemic, we all need to follow the principles of universal love, tolerance and compassion and extend a helping hand to the needy and the poor. We must also show our gratitude to the frontline warriors who are risking their lives to save others in this battle against coronavirus. Unquote. Now, the biggest ever evacuation exercise by air and sea will begin uh, today to bring back around 15,000 Indians stranded abroad. Under the One Day Bharat mission, 64 flights between 14 Indian cities and 12 foreign countries will bring back 14,800 people in the first phase. And on day one of the evacuation plan beginning, 10 flights will be operating. Two flights from the UAE and one flight each from Saudi, Qatar, UK, Singapore, Malaysia, US, Philippines and Bangladesh will bring in approximately 2,300 Indians stranded in these countries due to the COVID-19 situation. Overall, 14,800 Indians will be airlifted during the first phase. And let's now get you a close look at the work that's going on at the Indian Consulate in Dubai uh, before the first flight takes off today from the UAE. Our correspondent gets us this ground report. This is the operation rooms in Dubai for COVID-19 repatriation of those Indians who are in extreme distress, mostly the blue-collared workers and uh, the pregnant women, those who are unwell, the elderly and others who are in need of immediate repatriation. As you can see uh, in the background, a lot of these people along with the Indian consulate officials our uh, Indian community volunteers who are working to help prepare the list and uh, facilitate in the repatriation of the uh, distressed Indians uh, in the special flights which are going to run for the next one week. The Indian Navy has launched Operation Samudra Setu as part of national effort to repatriate the Indian citizens from overseas. The Indian naval ships Jalashwa and Magar are deployed for this operation and will bring back the stranded Indians close to 1,000 persons starting the 8th of this month as part of Phase 1. The naval ships will also facilitate their embarkation after requisite medical screening. Two ships of the Indian Navy have been deployed to repatriate around 2,000 stranded Indian nationals from Maldives to Kochi and Tutikorin. The Indian High Commissioner to Maldives, Sanjay Sudhir, has termed this as the biggest evacuation exercise of its kind from the neighboring country. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic, Government of India has launched its biggest ever global evacuation operation. For Maldives also, the evacuation we will witness in the next few days and weeks will be the largest in our history. I am grateful to Indian Navy to launch Operation Samudra Setu to evacuate close to 2,000 Indians through a virtual sea bridge from Maldives to Kochi and Tutikoran. INS Jalashwa and INS Magar have already been deployed for this purpose. The evacuation will be in two phases with two ships, first evacuating Indians to Kochi followed by evacuation to Tutikoran. We are giving top priority to medical cases, to women and those who have lost their jobs. The evacuation exercise will be a big relief for Indians who have been yearning to join up with their families in India. Air India will be operating special flights from the 8th to the 14th of May for foreigners who are stranded in India due to COVID-19 lockdown. The special flight tickets are available for sale now for people who need to go abroad. The nationals of the destination countries Indian and foreign nationals who hold valid visa of at least one year duration of the country of destination, green card, the OCI card holders can all book their tickets from India to London, Singapore and select destination in the US. The entire cost of travel will be borne by the passenger. And moving on now to some other news, uh, some tragic uh, 
incident that happened this morning. A chemical gas leakage that was reported at the LG Polymers industry in Arar Venkatpuram village in Vishakapatnam. People have been taken to hospital after they complained of burning sensation in eyes and breathing difficulties. Police, fire, tenders, ambulances had reached the spot. The NDRF team has also reached the spot for evacuation of the people in that locality. Moving on now, the operational commander of Hijbul Mujahideen Riyas Naiko was eliminated by security forces in his village in Pulwama district. He's been on the run for eight years. The mobile phone services of private operators and mobile internet services across the valley have been suspended. There were two separate encounters in which four terrorists were killed. One in Sharshali village where two unidentified terrorists were killed and the other in Begapura in Avantipura where Naiku and an accomplice were eliminated. The gunning down of Naiku is a major breakthrough in the fight against terror. It comes after eight security personnel including two army officers, Colonel Ashutosh Sharma and Major Anud Sood were martyred in Handwara. The 35-year-old Naiku carried a reward of 12 lakh rupees on his head. And uh, moving on now to uh, COVID uh, updates now. The, in fact, let's now take a look at the latest numbers of COVID-19 cases uh, from across the country. The total number of confirmed cases now stands at 52,952, of which the active cases of COVID-19 across the country stand at 35,902. A total of 15,266 people have been cured or discharged so far, taking the total recovery rate to 28.72 percent. A total of 1,783 people have lost their lives. Maharashtra continues to be the hardest hit state with a total of 16,758 cases. Gujarat has reported 6,625 cases, while 5,532 cases have been reported in the national capital, Delhi. The World Health Organization has warned that countries emerging from restrictions to halt the new COVID-19 must proceed extremely careful or risk a rapid rise in new cases. During the news conference, the Director General Tedros also outlined six criteria that the organization recommends countries consider before taking steps to reopen, which include signs of cases declining and ensuring that health systems are in place to detect isolate and treat new cases as they emerge. These WHO guidelines came as government-ordered lockdowns have become increasingly unpopular as countries suffer rising unemployment and economic activity grinds to a halt. Over 37 lakh persons are confirmed to be COVID-19 infected worldwide, while 2.63 lakh people have lost their lives till now. China has, however, strongly opposed the claims made by the U.S. and urged it to stop spreading false information and to concentrate on its domestic problems. China's uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made it clear that China has always been open, transparent and responsible in the fight against the pandemic. She added that China has sent a great deal of medical supplies to various countries in a bid to support their fight against the pandemic and the U.S. is one of them. The total number of confirmed cases in China are 83,968, while 4,637 people have lost their lives till now. Now, Britain has emerged as Europe's problem child of the COVID-19 crisis. It has recorded over 30,000 deaths, the highest total in Europe, exceeding even Italy. The latest total for Italy, which also records the death of those who have tested positive for the virus, stands at 29,684. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has pledged to reach 2 lakh tests for coronavirus a day by the end of May. The government must review the lockdown measures by law, but the Prime Minister said he was waiting until Sunday to announce the government's plans because more data would be then available. Spain has extended the state of emergency imposed to combat the COVID-19 pandemic for two more weeks from the 10th of May, allowing the government to control people's movements as it gradually relaxes a national lockdown. Spain, where more than 25,000 people have died from COVID-19, has been under a lockdown since 14th March. The current extension means the state of emergency will conclude at midnight on 24th May. 
Although the situation is improving, the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez said it is necessary to maintain some restrictions on the movement to keep the infection at bay. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has announced steps to ease the coronavirus lockdown, saying the first phase of the pandemic had passed, but there was still a long way to go. Germany went into lockdown in March to slow the spread of the virus. Its reproduction rate has been falling for several days, and Merkel said it was now consistently below one, meaning a person with the virus infects fewer than one other on average. Now, under measures agreed, people from two households will be allowed to meet and more shops will open, provided hygiene measures are in place. But guidelines on keeping a distance of 1.5 meters and wearing mouth and nose masks on public transport will remain. The restrictions would be reintroduced if an area registers more than 50 new infections per 1 lakh inhabitants within seven days. The number of cases stands at 1,68,162, while 7,275 coronavirus-related deaths have been recorded till now. And uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Russia should not rush to lift the COVID-19-related restrictions, warning that any haste in removing preventive measures could undo their work so far. Putin said governors would have the responsibility of deciding how to proceed in their own regions. Some states are resuming businesses from the 12th of May, simultaneously urging citizens to continue observing the self-isolation measures where possible. Some shops will open as well as walking exercise will be allowed in the first phase of lifting the lockdown restrictions. The number of cases had risen by over 10,000 for a fourth consecutive day and now stood at 1,65,929. Russia has recorded 1,537 COVID-19 related deaths. Now with the total number of uh, corona positive cases in Bangladesh going up to 11,719 since the first case that was detected on the 18th of March and 740 new cases being reported in the last 24 hours, a total of 186 people have died due to COVID-19 so far. More than 1,400 people have also recovered from the virus. Our correspondent filed a report on the situation in the country. Take a look. The spread of coronavirus in Bangladesh continues to grow. Till now, more than 11,700 people have been infected by the coronavirus in the country. 790 new corona positive cases were reported over the last 24 hours. On Wednesday, three more people died in the last 24 hours, taking the death toll to 186. The general holidays in Bangladesh have also been extended till May 16th. Most of the government and private offices are closed. Public transport services are also suspended. However, in view of the serious economic challenges, Bangladesh is gradually opening up some crucial sectors in the country. It has announced that from May 10th, the shops and malls will open from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon to facilitate the Eid-related buying. While allowing the shops and malls to open, they have been given instructions to follow the health directives issued by the government. The malls are required to provide for hand sanitizers and maintain social distancing in view of the corona outbreak in the country. Government has also announced that banks will now open for longer hours. Earlier, they were opening till 1 p.m., but from May 10th, they will be open for business till 2.30 in the afternoon. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had announced on Monday that small and cottage enterprises in districts will also be allowed to open. In the meanwhile, Government of India on Tuesday announced that it will bring back its citizens stranded in Bangladesh by chartered flights. The Civil Aviation Ministry announced seven flights will be operated from Dhaka to evacuate 1,400 Indian nationals willing to return back to India. Rajesh Jha, DD News, Dhaka. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news. Thanks for being with us.